Okay, next we're going to look at the transport layer, which is a layer underneath the application layer. We're going to break it down like so with a look at some principles that are relevant to many transport layers. And then we're going to specifically look at the two internet stack transport layers. So the two that are commonly in use, TCP and UDP. And we'll talk about each of them and try to connect the principles that we've looked at at first with how they're actually implemented in the protocols. So let's start with a generic kind of introduction to transport services and protocols. All right, the main, the first thing we want to know at a high level is that the transport layer is about providing communication, logical communication between processes where processes are programs running on different hosts, possibly different hosts, I guess they could be the same. So the point of the transport layer is to provide logical communication between processes running on different hosts. I've got a little picture of that. Um, logical meaning that it will appear as if host A is talking to host B, even though in actuality they're going over lots of other hosts lots of other intermediate links, routers and stuff in between it. But the transport layer is about end systems communicating with each other, and that's just another way of saying that it's an end-to-end -end protocol, not point-to-point. -point. The sender side is going to break application messages. Well, it's going to get a message from the application layer. It's going to break it into segments, into chunks, and pass those segments to the network layer to have the network layer move it across to the final endpoint. The, receiving, the receiver is going to reassemble those segments into the original application layer message and pass that up to the application layer. Um, and that's another way of saying the sender does um, multiplexing and the receiver does demultiplexing. That, that begins to, uh, to speak to those words. There are more than one transport protocol available to applications on the internet. Uh, in the internet, there are two, TCP and UDP, that we're going to look at. Um, in the book, the authors have uh, maybe a little sort of goofy analogy about two houses in New York and Los Angeles, and there are 12 siblings in each house. Every child sends one letter a week to a child in the other house. Okay. Um, they have designated Ann in New York to collect the letters, take them to the post office, and also to pick up all the letters that are received and distribute them to all of Ann's siblings. Bill does the same thing in Los Angeles, so he collects and distributes the letters that are going from or to his siblings. Does that make sense? Um, now we know the post office is the one that actually delivers the letters from New York the New York post office to the LA post office and vice versa. All right, so let's try to understand how this analogy maps into networks, right? The houses are like, um, I guess, two computers, two hosts. And the children are like processes. So there could be multiple applications, multiple processes running on a single host. Um, the letters are messages. They're, the letters themselves are, I should say, the application layer messages. The transport layer in this case is what? What's the transport layer in this analogy? Ann and Bill. Right. Ann and Bill are the transport layer because they take the messages from the application layer and give it to the network layer, which is the post office underneath them. Um, now, you know, Ann and Bill, they know how to do their part. They know how to collect and distribute, and they know how to go to the post office. They probably don't know and don't want to know any of the details about how the post office actually gets that letter from New York to Los Angeles. It may involve trucks and planes and so forth, right? That complexity is dealt with at the network level. So we see the layers again and how um, they're abstracting away the details. But the transport level is just connecting processes to the network layer. 
Let's kind of compare and contrast the network and transport layer. Um, think about this, these fill in the blanks for me. Um, starting with the transport layer, because we've already talked about that, the transport layer provides logical communication between what? Processes. Processes, right. The transport is about providing, communicating between processes. The network layer, however, provides logical communication between what entity? Entities. So the network layer, we know it's at a lower level. What are the entities that are communicating with each other in in the network layer? Would be like it's forming messages. Um, it's kind of who is it that's sending and receiving messages at the network layer, at, in the most basic level. Um, kind of when we think about how this t reaches back to our previous discussion on the transport layer is end to end. The network layer is point to point. So if it's point to point, who is talking to each other at the network layer? What are the what are the points? They're hosts. Right? Host is our generic name for any computer or router. Right? So the network layer, hosts are communicating. The transport layer, processes are communicating. The internet transport layer provides two protocols. TCP and UDP. TCP is a reliable, in-order service. It provides congestion control, flow control, um, and requires uh, connection setup. Um, if we can just give you a hint on what this, some of this stuff is, congestion control means that TCP will slow itself down if the network appears to be congested. TCP also provides flow control, and that means the TCP sender will slow itself down if the receiver can't keep up with the speed that it's sending. So it will limit itself in response to network congestion and the receiver's ability to receive. Uh, in order to do all this, it does require time and resources to be set up ahead of time to create this connection with TCP. Uh, but the, the payoff is, in addition to flow control and congestion control, TCP ensures that the packets, the segments, are received reliably so they don't get lost and they're received in order. Have we already talked about this? We've mentioned this. We're going to talk about it a lot more. UDP is unreliable um, and it has no order guarantees. They call it just a best effort. It's very much a no frills extension of the internet protocol IP that it's sitting on top of. So it, it adds very little overhead and provides very little um, service. Notice that neither of these services provide delay guarantees or bandwidth guarantees um, or security.